Hey everybody, I just wanted to go ahead and give you that promised video about how to format your annotated bibliography before you submit it tomorrow night. So, or you, or today if you would like to. Um, okay, so what you need to do is first make sure that you've got Times New Roman throughout your entire document. So I just took the example bibliography and put it in the default of Microsoft Word. Uh, actually, I forgot to add all this. Get rid of my formatting here. Hold on just a second. Let me let me delete this formatting right quick so we can start with a blank slate here. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. So now this is, um, you would have Calibri if you're doing it in default. And this is just the basic double space the way that Microsoft Word has it set. Okay, now, um, what I would like to do first is to go ahead and put in our uh, page number. So, you want to click on the Insert tab, click on the Page Number option here, top of page, and you want to choose the third option, so plain number three. Now, because this is my personal Microsoft Word, the font default that I've set it for is Times New Roman 12 point, which is the um, standard MLA font and font size. So what I'm going to do here is type in my last name um, and then put a space. And you can see that this is the correct font. If you have Calibri on yours, you'll want to go select it and make sure that you do choose um, to use Times New Roman 12 point font. And then when you get finished with that, you can double click into the body of your paper and you will be in the body of your paper and no longer in the page number section. Okay, so you guys know already we have to use Times New Roman uh, 12 point font. So I'm gonna press Control A and that will select the entire document. So whenever you wanna apply a vast change uh, or entire document change, all you do is press that control A and that will let you go in and make your uh, formatting changes and apply to the entire document. So I'm going to press uh, Times New Roman and I'm going to select 12 point font. Now when I said that when you select it, it will apply to the entire document, I just want to qualify that. It will apply to the entire document except for headers and footers. So whatever you have in the header and footer, you, it's going to be a different font unless you go in and change it. Make sure you put the same Times New Roman 12 point font. Okay, and you know we talked in class um, about how Microsoft Word uh, adds additional space so that whenever you press the enter key to go to the next line, it's going to add an additional um, like 0.5 spacing. So we don't want that. Even though we can choose um, whoops, we can choose double space right here. This document is still not true double space because it has the additional spacing after. So every time I've pressed the enter key, you can see a little bit um, larger spacing in those areas than you see within the annotation itself. So if you will go ahead in the paragraph uh, arrow, so you're in the home tab, in the paragraph section, put a little small arrow, and then the little paragraph window pops up, and we're going to choose zero after, and we're going to keep it double space. And now I'm going to select just my source, and I'm going to add the hanging indent. So I have the source selected. I'll go right here, and I'm going to choose under the special section in indentation, hanging and it's gonna it should give me a default of 0.5 it's hanging it by 0.5 so or a half an inch so if you click the OK button and that does not happen then you can go back in and do it manually you can choose because sometimes I've noticed people will have a like a 0.3 and that's too that's too uh, too short you want to have that full half an inch so I'm going to go ahead and go back in here again, and let's put this back on to the default, which is 0.5. Okay, so now we need to press the tab key 
two times. Remember, the annotation um, is going to be, um, the first line is going to be double tabbed so that all the other lines can line up right here with the second line uh, of your annotation, of your source citation, excuse me. So tab one, two. And that's all there is to it. Okay, let's do this again. Select your source, just the source, and be careful to end at the period. Don't go over. Go back into the paragraph section. In the special section, choose hanging, press OK. Then put your cursor to the left of the first word of your annotation and press the tab key twice. And it should push it over for you. Make sure that your cursor is to the left of the first word and click it to the left of the first word of your annotation. Remember, the annotation is this area right here where you're discussing the article above it or the website above it. And as you know, I have these numbers or the, the questions bold so that it stands out. And then I've got the question in parentheses beside it. Yours should be just like this. And make sure, no, I did not write question five. What is the national average level, entry level salary for your job? Uh, question mark, close parentheses, period. I didn't do that. I have incorporated the question into the prose. This source helps me answer question five. And then boom, there's question five. In this case, I answered more than one question, so I put comma eight. Uh, and then boom, there's the question comma, and 10. And notice I have the word questions because I have answered more than one question. I wouldn't say this source helps me answer question 5, 8, and 10. I would have to say answer question 5, question 8, and question 10. Or I can say help me answer questions 5, 8, and 10. And then I've got the period afterwards. So a lot of people submit their papers uh, to me, and they actually will just write, for example, question one, and they'll have the question beside it, and they'll have the period after it. So this creates a fragment, because question one is not an independent clause. So please remember to avoid those 10-point fragments. Make sure that you actually write out a sentence in which you include the question number and the corresponding question in parentheses. And then put that period and then answer the question again with complete sentences. So you're writing out complete sentences for your annotation. You're not writing it in shorthand or text or whatever. You're actually writing out complete um, sentences. Okay, and that's all there is to it. If you happen to have any questions at all, please uh, text me. But we should you shouldn't have any issues because uh, if you're in my face-to-face -face class, we've covered this in class, and you have the example. If you're in my online class, you have the example, and you've had chances to uh, text me or email me or message me about it. But I just wanted to clarify this for you so that you can see it if you're a visual learner uh, as I am. So... Take care and have a great weekend.